Welcome to the Flyman Fishing Show, where we talk fly fishing, fly tying, and everything in between. I'm your host, Scotty Davis. Hey, buddy. <laughs> How are you? Is this going to be like the video part going to be out there too, or just the audio? Uh, both. Oh, okay. You look great. Don't worry. Well, just, you know, I want to make sure I've, I've got my little forest <laughs> kind of vibe. I like it. Is that an orchid? Yeah, that's accidental, but it looks good. <laughs> How goes it? kind of fine tune it oh yeah that's real nice urban jungle baby <laughs> yes sir what you been up to oh man uh well t- uh i wasn't didn't go to the studio yesterday so this morning i've been getting prints out and getting things like that kind of polished up um kind of the busy busy work part of being an artist yeah the money shipping part. shipping stuff out and all that kind of stuff you sell a lot of prints. Yeah, Father's Day is coming up, and it's kind of heavy with that kind of stuff this time of year. Yeah. You're painting for the uh, Halsey tournament too, right? Uh, the Don Holly, yeah. Yeah, the Holly. And they have them now. They're they're sitting there waiting to be taken by the winners or the <laughs> second losers, whatever. <laughs> When's that tournament? Uh, it's, today is day two. Nice. Yeah they say who's in the lead or anything yeah yesterday they posted it it all looks pretty close i would say out of 25 anglers there's probably 10 on the board nice have you, ever, like that. have you ever fished that no nah, uh-uh. no it's it's like that's pretty big money stuff i don't really worry about those are the the guys that kind of go hunt elephants those kind of guys you know <laughs> yeah want to make so, target vision more stressful do a tournament out of it yeah i'd rather just keep it fun and not stressful yeah well how was mexico you just got back a couple days ago right yeah it was good it was good well it was good after i left (laughs) i just i are we are we on the thing right now we yeah just yeah okay i didn't know if we were live or what it's always live paul okay good good (laughs) barely live maybe that was what i'm used to um yeah, so I just did a half trip. That was the best way to sell it to my wife, basically, because it was about a week after the Keys, and it only came up about a month and a half ago, so it was kind of a last-minute deal. And I figured the best way I could sell it was saying, hey, baby, I'm just going to go half the time. I'm not going seven days. I'm just going to fish three days. Right. So I was able to get away with that, and, of course, the day I left, they just crushed it the next three days. Were you, so, there, with, were you there with Harris? Yeah. He did pretty well. Harris, Harris, and my buddy Garrett from Houston, and a few other guys from Houston that I met when I was there. But that was a trip. Yeah, man, it was seven of us. Um, I flew to Houston, and we took the private plane. Of course. <laughs> yeah, and, and w- which was great because otherwise it'd be about a five and a half hour shuttle drive from Cancun, which I had to do on the way back because I left early. Yeah. So. I still got tagged with the old five and a half hour trip, but man, it's, it's worth it though. I mean, what's five hours compared to being in paradise for about four days. Yeah. Did you go to the same place you always go to the Palmetto club? No, uh, I went back to a place called Ishglag, which the first year I worked at your shop, uh, actually I went there and fished at that Costa de Cocos lodge where Nolan back worked in like 2013 in January. Um, and we didn't fish Coast to Cocos again, but we fished a place called yeah, X Flats. And uh, it's it used to be Terra Maya. Tierra Maya was the name of the lodge. And this guy named Jesse bought that lodge and renamed it X Flats. So yeah. it's an older lodge, but kind of has a new blood, a new vibe to it. Yeah. Um, and it's strictly, is it, it's mainly permit, but obviously there's tarpon and bonefish too, right? Yeah, it's similar to the Palometto Club where they really sell you on let's let's focus, focus, focus on permit and anything else that gets in our way, we'll try to catch. Yeah. Which a lot of things get in your way. I mean, you know, permit, they highlight that because that's the hardest thing to catch there. And you might go seven or six full fishing days and catch one at four o'clock on the sixth day. But in the meantime, you ran across some jacks, you ran across some tarpon, and, and you probably ran across some bonefish. So you know, you're going to put that all your on, on your notches on your belt for sure. But, uh, you know, the prize is definitely the permit. Yeah. You just yeah. didn't, y'all just didn't see the fish. 
I mean, I saw tons of, I saw tons of permit. I, I casted to probably, you know, if you added up all the different groups of like 10 to 20, I probably cast into 150 permit, but never really got any follows. I, I guess they were, it was just, you know, it comes down to the pressure, the weather and the, the weather turned the day I left, of course. And, uh, they caught, I think, 11 in the three days I was there. And I think they ended up with 38. Dang. So, you know, they, they did well. And Harris caught, what, five or something like that? No, he caught one every day. So one every day. he caught six. What a bastard. I know. And there, there were a couple guys that, you know, caught three. There was one guy that caught three one day, two one day, a couple tarpon, a grand slam, you know, that whole just going down the list of, crushing it nice how was the lodge other than the fishing good bar it was cool man it's, it's it's definitely a rustic feel but they're i think they're purposely making that a rustic feel i mean you don't want to go to mexico at least i don't i don't want to go in the middle of mexico on on those waters and have this posh high class living vibe i want to make it feel like I, I live in the village and yeah but at that same time they're really nice rooms and they're really cool like settings where you're sitting for dinner and it just has a cool true mexican vibe to it food was awesome oh yeah really good fresh fish snapper shrimp we have fajitas one night uh really good food so i would definitely check out x flats look at their instagram it's really cool they're always posting something somewhat interesting so the costa de coco that's the same the same exact area right yeah like costa de coco is about a mile down the road are they still going? When I went, when I went down there, um, roughly, well, not quite ten years ago, but nine years ago, that deal had just happened where that American had just disappeared down there, and so it was real spooky down there. Everyone was spooked out, and they did. Will Rice did a uh, a podcast down the path, I think is what it's called. It's it's really worth checking out. It's kind of like a a murder mystery type of vibe to it. And uh, it's about that American that disappeared back down there back in 2012. They don't know if he like jumped ship and became like a, a second identity down in Belize. They don't know if he saw the wrong thing and got murdered. They don't know if he got kidnapped. They don't, he just vanished in midair. So there's no trace. There's no. No. Huh. So check that out down the path. I don't know if you've heard of that podcast, no, but it's worth, it's worth a listen. That sounds interesting. So yeah. that happened in Esquilac. I, I vaguely remember that happening. I didn't realize it was there. Yeah, like Fly Fish Journal did a big story about it. Uh, I think it was he five a fisherman. Was he a down yeah, there? Yeah, no, he was. He was down there with his buddies. He was a Texas guy, and he was down there with his buddies that were from Sweden. Strange enough, and they were all staying at that lodge together. And they do they do a yearly trip every year together. And uh, he was on some flat by himself, and they had rented a car. And his buddies came back and the car was still there, but they couldn't find him. Huh. So, yeah, I mean, they were just kind of down there on a DIY thing. That's strange. So, yeah. Nice. Who knows, Scotty? Who I'm, knows? Who knows? You've been fishing much around here? Not really, man. Sadly enough, uh, I just got a, a van, one of those ProMaster Dodge vans. Oh, sweet. And so I'm going to start building it out. And Mike, uh, not Mike Beck, Mike Benson came by yesterday to help me kind of cl- cut the, uh, the plywood for the floor and he said something real sad to me he goes pal this boat sure is getting dusty <laughs> so i was like man I just it kind of felt like a like a hit to the face you know yeah. so uh it's just been a while during this transition time and the tides as you know have been weird like they're all night tides we're not getting any daytime flood tides right now yeah um except you know you can go kind of work the fringe of it but i just haven't been out in about a month yeah yeah, it's been, been a minute for me too. Yeah, and you got you got yourself a big old boat. It's bigger than my old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I love it. It's uh coming from my old boat, getting wet all the time, and that thing you you know never getting wet in a panga. Yeah, and you got plenty of friends with little boats. Yes, yeah. That's, you know. So uh, Martin just bought Martin when I bought that. He bought the little shadow cast, I guess that little two to three man. Oh yeah, killer handle boat. So you know, almost yeah, almost put that thing on top of it, but. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I got that one to that one to use. Man, that looks all professional behind you. Look at you. You're like a professional podcast studio. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't work. This is 
<laughs> Is that really just for show? No, it works. Okay. It'd be funnier if it didn't. That would be amazing. So you like, do have a microphone. Your podcast is rolling. You've done almost 50 now, right? Yeah, we're on 48. You know, we've taken a kind of hiatus here and there between Mike Benson being involved in COVID and being a nurse. So there was just a year where we kind of didn't really do anything. And yeah. we all kind of had that uh, that outlet that wasn't getting taken care of, which was always our podcast. We just love getting together and, and bullshitting on there. I mean, you've been on there before, too. You know, we just get together and talk about stupid stuff. Yeah, there's nothing there's nothing you can learn from it. It's not a fly fishing podcast <laughs> in the way where you're going to get on there and find out how to to rig a double nymph rig. Yeah. You know, so oh, that's where Tom Rosenbauer and you guys come in. Yeah, we don't do much. I guess you're probably kind of in the gray area of goofing off and learning yeah, something. Kind of charcoal gray. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So uh, well, I'm I'm glad to be getting back into that. You still there? Yeah, sorry, I had a call that I had to. Oh, I was gonna say, weird picture you just popped up. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> you would you call? Um, well, how's the uh, daughter? You're a new dad too. Sorry, did that happen again? Yeah, it's a funny picture though. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, doing the dad thing. Uh, I got a five month old, and as you know, keeps you busy for sure. Keeps you on your toes. You're always learning something. Um, Something new is always happening, some new look that she's always giving, and uh, it's a lot of fun. You're always wondering what she's thinking, you know? Right. Um, five months old today, though. Nice. Happy birthday. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess with these little ones, we got to celebrate the little things. Yeah. Kept them alive for five months. It's incredible. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> you would think when you're walking out of there with a baby that, that you need some sort of some sort of test but they just here, here's your baby here you yeah. go and they just yeah. expect that you can do this yeah that was the scariest day the first kid walking out you're like i, I can't believe I'm, I'm here doing this you know i don't know what the hell yeah. to do it needs hey, to be like raising hold your... on real quick yeah can you can you can... see me are you good here yeah i can see you. well i can see a picture okay. of you okay hold on all right i'm coming back I just had to text text my wife later. I'm on, I'm on this, so she didn't keep calling me. Yeah, <laughs> how's she doing? Um, she's doing good. She's pretty much the end of her school year. School psychologist, so uh, Thursday's her last day. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, Bartley's their their schools end until like the 18th. So oh, the, wow. third, they're the longest in the state. So they get a five week summer, which is pretty shitty. Yeah, and stays the longest. Charleston, yeah, we're in school the longest in the state. And then they only get a five week summer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, rest Sarah's, the, the rest of the states, all, most of them are all, already out. Yeah. Sarah's teachers got out. The kids got out Friday. Teachers last day was yesterday. And so she's like, you know, it, more of the admin department. She's got to stay a few more days. And then she goes back August 2nd. Nice. Does she do the psychology psychologist for the whole district or for one school? uh for two schools yeah that's good move around yeah man so you i guess you guys have been busy though you guys are getting more into the the fly tying side of the business and all that stuff yeah the uh all of blaine's flies that's really keeping us busy um okay. we can't really keep up with the demand so it's i guess a, a problem but i guess a good problem to have is not enough stuff to sell but and slisky left you he did leave me that bastard but you got kyler now yep yep we got kyler from gordian sons awesome yeah man um he's been on trips. he's been on trips with y'all right with you and garrett you know i missed the one if he was i missed the ones that he was i know that he kind of i'm not gonna say i got screwed a little bit but like the last few trips we did is kind of when right when he was starting there so he got kind of just left out of the loop on that. Yeah. Got to have somebody to watch the shop while everybody goes and plays. I know. Like, I think when we went to the Seychelles a couple of years ago, he had just kind of started. So he wasn't quite able to do that. But Charles, old Charles is glad to have him back. Yeah, we sure are. He's a hell of a guy. So Very you cool. caught a giant GT in the Seychelles, didn't you? Yeah, man, that was crazy. Uh, that's a long way to go. And I was kind of... <laughs> I'm not going to say I was a skeptic on the whole thing. I was just excited to do it. 
but a long way to go across the whole world to basically catch a jack. And then I got proven totally wrong. I mean, it's just, it's like a hundred pound jack and three feet of water and you get to see the whole event happening before your eyes. And it's so much fun and it's such an amazing place. We, we were lucky enough to be at Cosmo, which there's also Alphonse Island. And I'll be honest, I was, I was looking forward to catching a permit over there too, which I did not, uh, had a few chances and I was super pumped about the trigger fish, which I got to fish for those every day and finally caught one of those. What kind but of yeah, trigger? Under, what's that? What kind of trigger fish was it? It was the yellow margin. So they're real bright yellow looking, really cool looking had fish. the black bars on it or is that the mustache? That's one? the, yeah, that's the mustache trigger. Those I think they're so cool. Yeah. They're all so crazy looking. I call and it they have another one there that, they have another one there that's smaller called the Picasso trigger, which I did not catch one of those. I caught a gray trigger in the Bahamas and it was just so dull and ugly. And you see those ones over there, you're like, yeah, that's what I wanted, you know? No, but those gray triggers are impossible to catch. Yeah. I was uh, just happened to be walking down this beach with my wife and, and we saw it coming in, in off the waves under this little beach flat and it had a pink puff on there. And I, it must have bit it probably 10 times before I finally got the hook set in it. Kind of like a sheep's oh, head. Yeah. That tooth just hits that tooth and won't get hooked. Yeah. Well, I spooked probably 99 out of 100 that I've casted to. And then one time I was in the Bahamas and some mangroves were looking for bonefish. And I saw this trigger fish and he was just going around all the mangroves looking for stuff. And I, just like you, I probably had the fly in his mouth 10 times and just couldn't hook him. And then finally just gave up. I'm like, this is just never going to happen. I'm never going to catch one of these gray trigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Pierre the other day about trigger fish. And he said, the guy that taught him said, you need to find the trigger fish without a home. The one that's looking for a, a place, you know, cause then he won't back into that hole and he's more apt to yeah. cause he doesn't know his environment, I guess. Yeah. Most of the ones I always cast to are, are out in the ocean and kind of moving water. And I guess they're always just nervous about any sort of, you know, they have no cover or anything. So they're probably just bird nervous, but that's that's strange it seems like seychelles like that's that's besides the gts that's the the glory fish or the triggers i guess because they have so much variety and yeah easier to catch maybe i like how we're showing that gun off over there look at that thing oh snap Woo, <laughs> <son>. <laughs> <I was> scratching <laughs> <laughs> that's my pellet rifle <laughs> i know i know it's a good one it's a yeah, good one yeah so back to the gt what uh was that on a top water fly or a big streamer no, so it was it was during the part of the tide where we really not that you're not expecting to see a GT anytime down there, but we was it was a it was a falling tide and we were just looking for as the guide said, we're just looking for anything right now because we're kind of just stalling wait. It would be kind of like if it was three hours until high tide here, and you're just kind of you're not wasting time, but you're you kind of you're not focused on anything. Just got there early. And, yeah, and you're just ready for anything. Something might hit the fringe of the grass and you might see a tail. But And so we were – and the way they do it down there is they, they get out in the water, waist-deep water, and they pull the boat with a rope or they're holding on to it behind them. They're, they don't have pulling platforms, at least, you know, the guys that we use. And something just kind of caught his eye to, to the right. And we were probably about – 80 feet away from this kind of shelf, this kind of grass shelf. Uh, and I, I blind, to me, it was blind casting because I didn't see what he saw. And uh, cast it over there. It got about four feet into the into the turtle grass shelf. And I stripped it a couple of times. All of a sudden, just this Volkswagen size <laughs> fish comes out. And I'm, I'm stripping the, uh, I'm stripping the fly like crazy like really fast, but he is so big that it barely looks like he's swimming after the fly, just kind of really slow and lethargic looking coming at the fly. And, you know, we just all kind of gasped when we saw this fish because it was clearly the biggest thing that I've ever had, you know, aside from like a, you know, four foot tarpon or something, but this fish was so much wider and thicker and scary looking, honestly. And he followed the fly all the way to where I, I ran out of fly line in the tip and came almost to the boat and turned around and just, he tried to eat it, but he missed it. And then he turned around back to where he came from. And I just did kind of a, a hail Mary uh, back cast to him. And it kind of landed on his tail, which is usually the, the it's over kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he did, he did a full three, 360 and just, 
or I guess 180, I guess if I got my math correct, my geometry, <laughs> uh, and just did the same thing again. Slowly followed it all the way to the boat and right at the last minute ate the fly. And it was the most amazing eat I've ever seen. And and then we then it was just tug of war. You know, it's just just like a jack. But this is a little bit shallower water, so he wasn't diving or anything. We're just kind of making sure that everything's staying straight because the guide knew it was a big fish and wanted to kind of be careful with it. And then we kind of got in this little bit deeper hole, like I would say 10 to 15 feet in spots with all the, you could see down in the water, there were all these coral heads everywhere. You're back, in the, the boat. Th- you're, you're back in the boat at this point. Yeah. Yeah. We motored to follow him. It was about, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes. And he started stalling in this one area that was about 10 to 15 feet with coral heads everywhere. You could see them. And all of a sudden that line just stopped and it was like aiming down towards a coral head and, Cameron got out the guide got down to basically his shorts and dove down there and I'm just like oh my god here we go (laughs) and uh he came back up and the line started moving again I was like all right we're good and then it stopped again it was clear the fish had wrapped around another coral head and Cameron swam over there it was probably about 15 10 15 yards from the original spot same thing went dove down a couple times and the line started moving again he started to swim back towards the boat and the fish did a big run, and it, then it stopped again. We're like, ah. So Cameron swam over there. It was probably about from the boat, 40 yards from the boat, maybe. That's 120 feet for all you mathematicians out there. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, I would say about the length of a fly on and plus. And he just kept diving down, up and down, kind of gasping for air, air every time. The last time he was down there a little longer than the other times, and Simon – was with me we're looking at each other like oh my god the dude comes up with his his lips just kind of like kind of sucking <laughs> air and then just raises the fish above him just like halfway out of the water because the thing was 100 pounds and we just all yelled like crazy man it was so cool he had gone down there and opened his eyes and the fish was just staring him in the face and it was wrapped around a coral head and he just grabbed the fish and the leader broke so it tells you how like just saved it was yeah it was almost done so that coral had basically saved our fish because otherwise one more pull might have broken it damn so yeah it was, it was really like i hooked the fish and cameron caught the fish it was definitely a team effort Hell but it was God. such a cool story though such a cool thing to be a part of what pound leaders do y'all fish for those things uh it was 100 pound just straight piece 100 pound yeah just straight 100 uh some people were using like fluoro 140 but i think i just used 140 just regular regular stuff now if that if that fish would have been caught or hooked in the surf like a lot of these most of the fish that are caught there are surf fishing where the surf's coming in you kind of what you do is you fish for a uh, trigger fish until you start feeling cool water hit, hitting your feet and that's when you know the tide has turned and that cool fresh water is coming in that's when you go get your 11 weight or your 12 weight for gts and then Five minutes later, they're just blitzing everywhere. But if you were to hook that fish in that type of fishery, in that type of water, it would just no chance because it, it wraps itself around every coral head, every off possible thing it can cut. So when you're off the beach with them, yeah, that's why guys rarely catch 100 pounders in that surf situation. What do you think they're eating? Anything? Yeah, just anything. You, you just cast. You always want to lead the fly like 10 to 15 feet, just like you do for jacks here. And uh, and they just pounce on it. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're just eating anything that moves, you know? Somebody told me they'll, they've heard of them chasing down bonefish. I don't doubt that at all. Because I don't know why there wouldn't be bonefish up there in that coral, you know, when that tide turns and comes yeah. in. I mean, they're just eating anything and everything. Yeah, bonefish And most of the fish we fishing. saw in the surf, most of the fish we saw in the surf were those kind of 20 to 30 pound fish which are awesome to yeah. catch um i never i saw two more giant fish when we were fishing from the boat kind of the same similar way i was on that first one did you catch blue trevallies too or did anybody catch those yeah caught a lot of blue trevallies uh with rooster i was with rooster one day he caught one of those milk fish and then uh the last two days we went looking for permit chance and i were Chancellor Arbor, another artist from Texas, he was on the trip and we're kind of permit freakies. So we, we spent the last two days looking for nothing but permit and had a few shots. It just didn't happen. 
are those the Indo Pacific permit? The kind of the yellow yeah. lips on them. Yeah, they call them Goldilocks. Goldilocks. <laughs> Goldies. Yeah. Are they just like Atlantic permit kind of bitches? Oh yeah, they're they're the same deal. They just wear different makeup. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're the same exact fish. It's crazy. So, what was Africa like other than the fishing? Did, I mean, I guess you were stuck on an island in Indian Ocean. Yeah, we we landed in Dubai and we just hung out in the airport for eight hours and played uh, trampoline basketball. <laughs> I mean, that's and we drank beers. That's honestly all we did. And it's amazing how quick the time went by because then we had to fly at two in the morning from Mahe. Uh, no Dubai to Mahe and you land in Mahe about exactly eight o'clock and the flight that you need to take from Mahe to Alphonse leaves at 805 so you have to spend 24 hours in Mahe you, there's no way around it because you get in a little too late to get on that eight o'clock flight and that's like is that the capital of the Seychelles yeah yeah it's kind of like Nassau is the Bahamas okay about that size too yeah it's all about the similar deal nice yeah, like it's a long that. way to go, but I would I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, the flight was bad. No, I I let, I got on my flight on my seat, and it was like the middle aisle, and you know there's six seats in those huge airplanes in the middle. There was two do there were two guys on the end of mine, but they moved to sit with their family, so I had the whole row to myself. Oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. So I laid down. I'd watch a movie, sleep, watch a movie, sleep, kind of do that. Next thing you know, you're landing. Yeah. That's so crazy. yeah, it went. I wouldn't think you'd quick. find a Dubai, but I guess that is the most logical place. Yeah, a lot of people land. Well, Somalia is one of the places people connect in. Nice. But, but you got any? You got any fishing trips at all this summer with the family? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go back to. The, I'm gonna take Clayton back up to the mountains. Um, here in a couple of weeks, probably before it gets super hot. Up cool. to Burles Ford, he loves that that place. Oh yeah, for sure. What, what about y'all? Nothing crazy with the family in September. I'm going to head to Jackson hole and do, uh, the one fly out there. Are you fishing it? We're, yeah. And I've never fished it when I used to live out there and we're in the fly shop. So I was on the other side of it dealing with all those people and their licenses and all their flies. So it'll yeah. be kind of fun to be on the other side of it. You already decided what fly you're going to fish. No, uh -uh. <laughs> I would think a streamer though. Yeah something you could put a heavy leader on yeah and just really uh i've caught my i think it's more of a point system per fish but you get more points for, with bigger fish like i've heard of guys just going to the parachute at them sitting in a in a slot and catching 30 little eight inch cutties all day and that can win it so there is that guy that can do that but i'd rather go catch you know three four or five pound cutties and win with that yeah isn't there a few flies they outlawed from that tournament? They, they've outlawed the hook gap size. Like the double bunny got famous in that right, tournament. Right. Scott Sanchez. That's the one I was thinking and, of. Yeah, and the hook was so big that they've made it such a small hook that you can't tie a double bunny anymore with that small hook because it doesn't make sense because the hook gap will be too small. So they didn't outlaw specific flies, just a hook. Yeah. It makes sense. They've, they've tinkered with it you know, in order to basically screw you over a little bit. Some idiot coming there with like a San Juan worm or something, you know? Yeah, they, they can do that. And there might be a chance that they've outlawed some things like that. I really couldn't tell you. Yeah. What I mean, basically the, a worm. What was the shop you worked at? You were at Jack Dennis's, right? Yeah, I worked at West Bank Anglers for two West years Bank. and Jack Dennis for two years. Nice. Yeah. So. You have to see Slitsky when, he's, when you go back out there. Uh, we talked about because he, he guides in the one fly. So oh, he does? Yeah, so I'll see him, and maybe I'll be lucky enough to actually fish with him. So they just pair you by random with your guide? I think so, I think. I if you could we, need to, we need to finagle a little something. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. He's fun on a boat. Yeah, and then, then I'm taking my father-in-law, Keith, down to the uh, Baracho Pescador tournament in, in <sighs> Texas in late September. Nice. That's a redfish tournament? Yeah. Yeah, that's a like casting for a cure uh benefit it's a lot of fun it's down in port o'connor texas yeah i just recently heard of that uh the drunken fisherman yeah have you done that before yeah i've done it the last couple of years i help out with the art the artwork for it so and it's a couple of my buddies actually from 
the Jackson Hole Wyoming days. Let me let these guys out of here. Go really north. Come on, boys. Come on, <laughs> Come on, watch this guy. Oh, he's looking for lizards. He's a old, lizard man, Scotty. How, old, how old's Willie now? Two. Nice. And Norman's three. We just got a second dog. It's 12 weeks. <clears throat> oh, cool. Yeah, old Hambo. What kind of dog? I forget. I think he told me. Uh, Well, his DNA test said he was Mexican street dog. Awesome. And Chihuahua and uh, German short hair pointer. He's a he's a strange looking fellow. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I've, he doesn't like me. No, it's Sweet Pea that doesn't like you. Okay, she looks the same. She's brown and black, but okay, gotcha. They'll grow on you. Good boat sizes, like your dog. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You take them Absolutely. on the boat. Uh, Norman has, but not Willie. Willie's. I can't commit to having Willie out there all day long because he gets too hot. He's a shade kind of dog. He needs probably, to be in that shade. Probably can't swim either. No, and I know I know Norman can. He can. So, yeah, we were on the Yellowstone one time, and he just jumped out of the boat. And thank <laughs> God I had him harnessed because that Yellowstone was running, man. It was probably running four thousand cfs, and I don't know what happened. What would happen to him? He just. Yeah, he oh, just he sees something. He yeah, in his mind, he thinks he can get out of the tree or something, and just he's gone. Well, those Boston's, their little legs will grow so fast, he could probably walk on water almost. Yeah, I mean, he, he probably would have been fine. He probably would have swam to the bank or swam back to the boat, but who knows? <laughs> that water would have swept him pretty good. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, man. Nice. Uh, so, you got plans for the rest of the day? You going to finish some art? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the studio, work on a couple paintings I'm doing, um, and a couple new ideas that I've got. Now that I've kind of finished the ones for the holly, I can, I can get out and – do a little a few that i actually want to do myself um and some commissions that i've got as well how do you come up with the ones that you want to do yourself you just um just something that catches your eye yeah like i did one for the holly that i really liked a lot a watercolor of a tarpon and i, I might build upon that uh in oil and get a little looser i just when i do these paintings like i'm like man next one i'm gonna try this or i'm gonna try that so and then the commissions keep me pretty refined because commission is typically what someone says they want. Uh, I'm not doing as many just photo pieces anymore, like where people say, hey, can you paint this photo? It's just not as challenging to me anymore. And, and also a lot of the photos just aren't that good and don't give me the light I need and want. So I'm to the point now where people want a commission and they don't have quite the right photo. You know, I've got to be available to go take my own photo of that location or them painting and you know it definitely takes a little bit more in the budget to do that so i'm definitely limiting myself but at the same time i want a better quality painting and that's just why i'm here and what what i'm trying to do so uh it's just where i'm at in my career i guess <laughs> i remember you and i did that uh trout unlimited talk one time and I yeah. talked about the shop and you were talking about artwork and you were saying you didn't like to paint people's faces, you know, because people be like, yeah. oh, can you make my face look fat? And like, well, your face is fat, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to paint it like I see it. Yeah. I always like the, I always like the ones where you didn't do the faces, you know, you just have the, the hands and pencil and then the fish in color. Those were my favorite kind of series. Those were great. Yeah. And, you know, I've had a few people in the past where they wanted their photo painted of their face, of them holding a fish. And I told them, you know, it just, it would be a lot cooler if you just didn't have your face on here. And I think you're going to like it more in the future as you go down the road. And, and just as I predicted, a couple of them were like, Oh, Paul, I wish I would have listened to you and just done the fish. Cause I'm tired of looking at my face, you know? Right. Yeah. It'd be one thing if you were giving it to your parents, cause your parents never get tired of looking at your pretty cute little face, you know, right. but if it's in your hallway on your wall, I just, you know, it's just one of those things I think you get tired of. And it's all about the fish to me. Like, who cares what you looked like back in 2011 when you got that huge brown? Let's focus on the fish. Right. And the hands, the hands, like you said. Speaking of hands, you, your hands looked a little bit bigger than last time I saw them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whenever they tell me it's like a 30-inch fish. I'm talking about Dale's tiny hands or. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like people cheating the system when they. Oh, yeah. Because when they tell me it's like a 30-inch rainbow and I paint that fish to scale 
the, the hands end up being just gigantic because that meant it was really a 24 inch fish Stuck and I up. basically blew it up. Yeah. So, but yeah, this old Dale tiny hands guy, no one really knows who he is. Um, <laughs> he's out there and he loves fish and check it out. Dale's tiny hands. We're doing oh. a little, little shout out. Oh, the poker player too. He is. He is. He, uh, he knows how to work, work the, the dice and the chips for sure. <laughs> That's great. I like to have a little fun, Scott, just like you. You have to, have to. Life's too you really short. do. Are you still Absolutely. painting dogs and the sporting stuff too, or are you back to man? A little bit. Uh, yeah, some. Like when people uh, want to do a pet portrait, same thing though. I've just got to the point where I want to get a good quality photo of the dog and get it done my way. Uh, so I've I've done that a few times, uh, and sometimes people give me a photo and it's like, man, that's the perfect photo. Let's do it. So I'm not too much of a snob where the photo has to be mine. It's not like that. It just needs good light and a good angle and all that. And uh, I did go down to South Texas in February and had a good time with some guys down there and got a lot of really cool photos of dogs working, quail and and guys shooting. So I've got a lot to work with as far as that goes, a lot of reference material. I'm going to start doing some more. Yeah, those pointers are beautiful dogs to paint. Oh, they're so cool. I mean, that's why – I don't even put a gun in my hand. I just have a camera the whole time. So, so You're much always, fun to take photos of. Always batting a thousand that way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So how's, how's flood tide doing? It's good. We've got a store down on King Street now, which we're starting to try to kind of uh, focus on a lot more. We're going to hopefully start doing some events. I'm actually going to be in there once a week painting. Nice. Thursday from 12 to 5, I'll be painting in there. And Thursdays, typically, unless something's going on, we're all switching to Wednesday or Friday. But the plan is to be in there a little bit more lately That'll or going fun. forward than I have been lately. Yeah. So um, it's fun. Nice. That'll be good. I mean, that's the perfect tourist location. So, yeah. I mean, 90% of the people that come in there are, you know, from somewhere else and have never either heard of Flood Tide or have or been told they need to come check it out. And I've got a few paintings in there too and sell some prints. So we're doing a little bit art focus in there as well. We just teamed up with the Heo sunglasses and that's going to be kind of their uh, kind of flash, flagship place as well. And we're going to do some, some events together and that sort of thing. So we're excited about it. Are you dealing with Al? Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. I haven't so, tried those glasses yet. Are you, are you wearing those? I haven't yet. Um, everyone that has them likes them though. They're, they're they're just trying to simplify sunglasses they're either polycarbonates are all this price and glass is all this price instead of all these crazy frames and all these different price points it's a very simple deal from a dealer uh point of view yeah he worked at costa so he, i'm sure he saw all the the big problems with that yeah and Having he got different... all the costa's employees that costa got rid of when they got bought by that european company last year yeah oh i forgot about that yeah, so it's basically a reborn Costa, really. Yeah. Very cool. So, and they're based yeah, in man. Florida, right? Yeah, uh, New Smyrna, I think. Nice. So you all going to carry those? Uh, yeah, they're already in there. Oh, cool. I'll come check them yeah. out. So uh, that, that, it'll be cool. You carry a lot of non-flood tide products in there? No, not really. Uh, you know, we actually still have some flyman flies in there, you know, and we're we're – We'd love to get some more y'all flies in there as well um, yeah. and kind of pump that side of it up as well. So, oh, yeah. but you, the, at first it was kind of, let's keep it local and have some local stuff, like some local tires and you guys. And so we just need to get back to that and start getting that figured out. Yeah. Yeah. That could sell, that could do pretty well there in that location. For sure. I mean, there's no real other fly stops downtown. I mean, you got or the Orvis store, which, you know, we partner with before and done some stuff, but, uh, yeah, we're happy to be there. It's fun. So what, when are the are you going to start doing like a summer series of parties or just kind of randomly throughout the summer? Yeah, just kind of random. Nothing's really on paper yet. Then we've got the uh, the Taylor's Ball in October and the Charleston Fly Tournament, which is going to be two days this year. So oh, the tournament's two days? That. Yeah. Nice. You're going to have a high tide and a low tide, and then day two, just a high tide and the cutoffs at like, three okay because i think that low tide in the afternoon is at like four so you know we want to focus mainly on the high tide of things but we know it'd be fun to have two high tides to fish 
but also give you that low tide in the first day to to do some damages. I think most of the tournaments have been won on low tide, which is I'm not gonna say frustrating, but you know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So the Taylor's yeah. ball will be kind of the kickoff to that. Yeah, and it's the week of IFTD, which is frustrating because I'm supposed to go out there, as you guys probably are too. And I think the Taylor's ball is going to be Thursday night, and IFTD is like starts Wednesday. I'm kind of bummed it's so, not in Denver. I know it's what Salt Lake this year. Yeah. Yep. I had a good time. Oh well. In Denver. Hey, they party in Salt Lake too, Scott. <laughs> yeah. The Mormons get down. Yeah. I've never been to Salt Lake City. It's a nice town, man. I like it. I've been there yeah. quite a few times. You fish the, is it the Green River? It's close to that. Yeah, I fish the Green River and the Strawberry. And my, my brother-in-law is both live in Park City. So, uh, go, down, go out there every now and then. Nice. But that, I forget the name of that river in right in town. Um, that'll come to me here in a little bit. So, you're not, go, you're not going. You'll be at the Taylor's Ball. I might go Tuesday night. Wednesday and come back super early Thursday morning or Wednesday night because Tom wants me to play at the Drake party. Nice. So, yeah, you've done we'll that see. almost every year, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to open the Chiefs I don't, know if I've gotten be- I don't know if I've gotten better or worse every year. No, it's, it's about the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good time. Yeah. So, missed it last year, obviously. And, uh, it's, it would be hard to miss. Just it's fun to go out there and see everyone. Yeah, it is kind of like a big high school reunion with people you actually want to see. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That, did I tell you you're looking really good right now? Look at what, you. Is my sleeve still up? <laughs> no, just 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 in general. Yeah. You just had a birthday, didn't you? Yeah, a few happy, days ago. Happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, Jim and I. I know. Old Jim. Yep. We're a strange breed. I know. When is your birthday? Mine's today, actually what yeah working on my birthday <laughs> golly well, it's so shitty well, happy outside. Birthday, I, boy. I, I, thanks i was gonna put the boat in today and just take the day off but it's so shitty you know yeah well that's why you're looking good you're just <laughs> glowing yes yeah, so those breakfast beers probably in that neon light that's it <laughs> golly <laughs> but yeah man yeah when are we gonna fish i don't know but it's been too long dude the closest we came was when we were both launching at the same ramp about five months ago. Yeah, that's pretty sad. I know. Make a point and take a day off and do it. I know. Well, let's either go in the little boat or the big boat. We'll take the big boat. We take our little dogs with us. That'd be fun. Yeah, cross tether your willy in there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, sweet. We'll yeah. keep in touch. I'm sure I'll uh, talk to you here soon. All right, buddy. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop by for a random visit cool. soon, I'm sure. Yeah, man. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, tell the wife and kids, hey? All right, buddy. I'll do it. Thanks. See you, buddy.